welcome back to the second quarter of the Bobby Dupre Show. We do it in four quarters and uh, like a football game. And uh, we we throwing it back and forth today like a football, and we kind of missing the, the the pass and the catch. Uh, but uh, we'll just hold tight. Uh, last week I made a mistake, uh, and and we caught it. Nobody else told us about it. But uh, there's a picture that I showed, and I called this gentleman with the pretty white hat right here. Come on, Steve. Hey. Oh. Got the wrong picture. Really, I screwed it up again, huh? Because we gonna keep doing it this way, and as long as we keep modifying, I ain't gonna get it right. Okay, how about this one? Is that better? Now we got it. Now we got it. Uh, we showed this as uh, Jim Darby, and and I guess a, a friend of his. Well, uh, that's not correct. I realized right after mm -hmm. the program last week. This is Mr. Laurie Sashry, right. the dean of the deans in Church Point, Louisiana, a longtime friend of mine. And uh, the lady that's kind of, I guess, uh, right, driving him around, taking care of his, uh, you know, mm -hmm. household needs and things like that. I don't know the exact details, but they're good friends on right. top of all of that. Right. She is Mr. Robert Nellums. I'm always going mm -hmm. twice a year. I'm invited. A beautiful to place with the little supper, lighthouse. With the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Robert Nellums' wife in the picture here, oh, Miss Dot. There you go. And uh, I apologize for the error last week. Most of the time, we don't catch it, but. But if, you order, we caught. but if you order a pizza from Pizza Hut and the man comes in and got pops on his tag, that's Jim Darby. <laughs> you give him an extra big tip. You tell him Andrew Gitro said he needed to be tipped. That's he's, right. He's hustling, still working. So Mr. Laurie, of course, had a concrete service and other businesses, very successful. And uh, his uh, son uh, is the person that I ordered my 57 Chevrolet. Went and got all the details on his... Really? R Ross, uh, uh, Foster Ross, his stepson, and ra he raised him. Right. And uh, that was in Church Point, Louisiana in 1957. I went black, in and bought black, that black solid with a, black. With a gray interior. Oh, yeah, the gray and black interior. Got a story <laughs> on that, too, when I write my book. That's a par That's a whole uh, section. I'm, on I'm not going to say I can recite the story. Yeah, I'm just going to say I've been with the man enough that. And I, I always say the same way. I got, I got the roadmap. Thing. I got the roadmap. And I, I met Foster with you, I guess, years ago. Oh, yeah, then his and wife worked. Uh, Peggy. Peggy worked mm -hmm. for the company. Or oh, is working. Still, still working, working with the for the company. Absolutely. So we talk Dodge with Foster and we talk about those cars. Every time he'd see you, talk yep. about the car. The 57 oh, Chevy. Yeah. And I remember Mr. Blackett Dorman was the salesman that was waiting uh -huh. on me at Bordeaux Chevrolet, downtown mm -hmm. Opelousas. Bose Garage and Grill uh -huh. now. No, that Dorman is the Dorman that became the dealership no, later? No, no, no. That's that's, that's different. All right. uh, Mr. Blackett Dorman didn't want to take my order, really, because uh, he wanted to sell me a, a red and black interior, and I said, no, he sir. He thought it was harder looking. And uh, he says, no, that's what everybody's buying. I said, well, I saw the one I want. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I'm Mr. Cornelius' son. He said, yeah, y'all pretty, pretty much wanted y'all's way. I said, well... <laughs> I guess you could say Come that. I, I, you know, I've waited. Uh, I was almost 21, I guess, when I bought that car. I was in college. And uh, so when I got through with signing the papers and all of that, he says, well, is Mr. Cornelius going to come in and Holy pay God. for this? Right, right. Then he became very nice about Mr. Cornelius. And I said, no. I said, uh, I'm paying for this. Well, he said, you're in college, yeah? I said, well, uh, I, I saved the money. It's at the homestead. But that was the longest walk. When I got married, my first marriage to Adelaide, we got married in the big St. Landry Catholic. That's a long mm -hmm. walk from the back of the church to the altar. Right. Well, let me tell you, around where St. Landry Homestead was, across from, the From Bordeaux Chevrolet. Yeah, was around the corner. Right. Oh, Lord, that was a long walk. You had to think about that money. But that once I wrote that check, for. it was all done, and I love my little car, and that's a, got some more story about that. But, but we I, need to move on. Well, I don't understand, though. You, the Doman fella back then, he thought that Bobby Dupre wanted it his own way. <laughs> I don't understand. That must have been when you were young, because certainly at this point in your life, you're just easy going, Take and everything's easy going. simple. Every, I mean, every, you don't. Everything's simple. Or I, I think it is. <laughs> now, maybe y'all don't think it is. <laughs> 
That's all right. Y'all never, tease y'all never tell me no, so it must be everything I suggest must be okay. I think it's fine. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> as let's, long as I don't complain. Let's move on before we all get right, in let's trouble. All right, let's go, let's go. We're going to show the house. I see yeah, bottle well, flowers that's in not, bloom. That's not the ones, though. Well, I'm going to show it. I'm going to get there. Hang on with me. Let, look right there. That's those red large flowers. That would be an amaryllis is what that would okay. be in the lily family. Uh, Vicky planted and all I that. See some I don't beautiful know roses. That. I love uh, pretty. Uh, Vicky's got very good taste. You're lucky to keep her around because uh, she keeps your flowers looking nice. I'm gonna give you a oh, close up oh, right yeah. here. Now, what's the purple? Oh, That's well, there, beautiful. That would be a bearded iris. Is what that. Now, would come be. in from the back side. I think there's two pictures right, there. Right. Uh, well, Just yeah, one. That's all Did I got. Did I take one out? Yeah, okay, I, one I, I kept the pretty one. Then. Okay, it. all right. right. You got it. And I can see you got some more buds coming with amaryllis. So you'll have amaryllis probably for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. The roses, I see a lot of buds. So you'll be in good shape. I'll better go over there and steal a couple of flowers oh, to bring home. Oh, yeah, yeah, do that, do that's that, what I'll do, do that. All right, so where are we going next? Let's go with some more photos. Or yep. not? Yeah, why Let's don't we go do that? How photos. about this? We're over at at uh, Pico de Gallo our, at our sponsor. Okay, man. let's get it real quick. While we at it, let's go to the Quarters Casino north right. of Opelousas. And then we'll come back and talk about the picture. Absolutely. Pico de Gallo is the great Mexican restaurant and cantina. As you can see in the photo, they got some good, uh, what, what, what do we call that? Uh, it's a uh, piquant sauce. Uh, what, what do you like to call that? Uh, Salsa. 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 I'll get it with some, some pecan in the uh, picante type sauce. And anyway. the chips are a little thicker mm -hmm. than what you get in most other places. So you can dip it and it's crunchy. I it's like the crunchy, salt crunchy. mine. Dr. Basil fusses me, but I still like the salt mine a little bit. I like the salty <laughs> flavor. But you can go there and if, Morning, you like, if you like a real good salty flavor, they got good salty margaritas there as well. Great Mexican cuisine. But you wouldn't know that oh, because you don't no, drink guys, it. I'll stay away from that now. But we're told that. That's correct. We've heard that over the, over the years, we may have partaken from a lot of that I over did. the years. But uh, anyway, while you're there, you can go to the uh, the Chevron next door. You can get all your fuel, Stucky's candy. You got uh, uh, Subway sandwiches. You can go try the gaming out. They got those nice machines that pay out like crazy. Up to thousand. Up to thousand dollars. So go out there and give your luck a chance there at the Quarters Casino and Travel Plaza. And that's our two friends there, Doug Sandals and uh, Philip Andrepont, who's what? still... Andrepont Printing Company. Andrepont Printing and working hard still every day. When I swing by there, that man is working. And of course, he the said next you're supposed to have something for me, too. Yes, he and I are working on a book. No, you, you, you're you supposed to... He gave you a book or something he to He did for you to him. read, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my homework before I give okay, it to you. Okay, all right, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I gotta make sure I got We're it not first. gonna fight. And also enjoying their yes. uh, time uh, at uh, Pico de Gallo mm -hmm. is uh, Miss Kathy and uh, Mr. Dago, better, uh, well, Mr. Lionel Leger, correct. better known as Dago. That's correct. And uh, out of that little conversation, uh, he's going to get a little work. Uh, he's going to put some limestone down at the uh, Catholic Church in Washington, Louisiana. He measured it out and... Uh, do it any day now. At Immaculate Conception. So, Father uh, Jared, church, uh, church, uh, I didn't forget that. what uh, you asked me to do. It's it's coming. It took a little longer than I had hoped. And I clicked the wrong button. How about this church? That's where we That's are. The That's church. Immaculate Conception. Uh, Father Jared Swear over at Immaculate Conception in Washington. And I see you looking right there. And that That's my vehicle. You, and that that you serve in. I guess you must have went out there and measured, I'm sure. That's and what, and that pickup truck. serving equipment. That, that truck is, is uh, lined you are, you're one of the most they impressive go. general contractors I know. So you, We've done a lot of it. How about this, gentlemen? Speaking of Washington. Washington, yep. We, we can bring in one of our uh, Another sponsor. sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, on the left is uh, Larry mm -hmm. uh, Hugay and his uh, dad, Mr. Wilbur. That's Miss Norma's husband, Miss Norma's son. Larry is the father of Jason. So Norma Hugay with Century 21... That's her nephew, J uh, uh, no, that's her grand grandson. Jason is her Jason grandson. Jason is her grandson. Really? I had no idea. How about well, that? Well, man, I'm something, learning everything. I taught you something. How well, about that? Uh, you see, Whoa, you see, I better Jason, mark, let J me mark that down. Jason kind of fell out of the scoff me. We're talking about Jason Hugay, the owner and, and chef at uh, uh, Steamboat. And, of course, I met Jason through Frankie. Frankie just kind of took Jason under his wing and, and brought him all the way up through his line cook and, and taught him things. And then sent, sent Jason off to college, to, to culinary school, school yep. went down and, and at Kibido. got his, his education, helped put the project together for Jason to own, own the Steamboat Warehouse. If you go by Steamboat Warehouse, let me tell you, the food, 
unreal. If you go on a Friday night, you can sit with my uncle Fuzzy Stanford there. He, he's the, uh, the doorman. He makes sure that the door on the bar end is always, you know, flowing real well, especially if the good looking ladies uh, are coming in to have a drink. He makes sure that they're seated. Mm -hmm. Everything is mm -hmm. fine. But go by the steamboat. Great uh, seafood, great steaks, great atmosphere, the drinks, the wine selection. Sit out on the wharf. Beautiful place to go. And okay. that's Jason's grandfather and Father, is that, this that's correct. That well, is there right. you go, Steamboat Warehouse. So we took care of our sponsor at the same time. I'll show another picture. This is the, with the boxing. Uh, that was Tuesday. Meeting. Went to uh, Riley Fontenot called me, and uh, oh, I called him. We returned calls, mm -hmm. and we ended up having lunch halfway between Lafayette and Opelousas. Beauchamp Truck Stop is right. a good place to meet. Absolutely. And uh, he uh, brought Bobby Le Bourgeois mm -hmm. and uh, Nutsi Quirk. Nutsi mm -hmm. Quirk is up front. Uh, Look that up. Hat. I mean, look at his hat. No, I don't like that hat, but he loves well, he it. Took it off. He Thank took it off. He took it off. And then his eyes, he's, he didn't box. He, something happened. I think he fell and slipped and fell in the house or right, something. Right. But anyhow, kind of bruised up. And, and the big tall gentleman all the way on the left in uh -huh. this particular picture, uh -huh. uh, he uh, is from Mere, Louisiana, uh -huh. and uh, he is a mesh. And uh, really? he said, uh, you probably know my mama's sister. I said, well, who's your mama's sister? Jose Prudum. I said, really? oh, yeah. I said, what about Desiree? I, he said, that's my first cousin. I said, well, oh, yeah. she worked with us, and she kept us entertained. She she was, I, I guess she had taken dancing because she would dance. Oh, Lord. Unreal. I mean, unreal. She danced in theater yeah. and everything. Just beautiful girl. Great and, personality. And then uh, the guy in the uh, front with the striped, the blue yes. and green shirt uh -huh. up front, his, uh, he lives, uh, we were talking about boxers mm -hmm. and Shelton LeBlanc's name came up and mm -hmm. I said you know Shelton is giving back to the what he got he has a boxing club right. bought a, a little uh, school bus lately we showed Correct. the school bus on Correct. the program about uh, a month ago to help the kids and he says well I see them working I live near where Shelton lives has, right. and he, he says I see them running up and down mm -hmm. the road doing their uh, running their training right so then the young man to his right in the solid blue shirt, mm -hmm. uh, the, I guess the shortest one of the group, shorter than me. Yeah, I'm a little bit taller than him. I'm in the back. You can right, barely see, see me in the back of uh, right. the two with, guys with, on the left. Sure. Anyhow, he boxed and then he knew Shelton and you know he knew all the guys. Chad uh, Broussard mm -hmm. uh, coached Chad. him when he was when he had some amateurs. Now, of mm -hmm. course, he primarily Chad has uh, professionals and promoter, he also is a good promoter today. Sure. And uh, he, then he says he tried the MMA. Really? And that's a tough, tough sport. You have to be in such a good shape. But anyhow, I, I didn't get their names. I apologize, mm -hmm. fellas, but uh, I, I think they all understand. One of the guys is taking the picture right now. MMA is fun, but you know me, I like the sweet science. I like the old traditional boxing. I like, yeah. did you watch B-Hop this weekend, the alien, Bernard Hopkins? I Man, sure did. What, 48 years old and he consolidated the titles? They gave him a split decision, did which was a robbery. That? That it was, was a robbery because he beat that man. There shouldn't have been no split. That, that was the, some of the announcers, and they're, they're some of the best judges oh, yeah. oh, that they have, absolutely. the announcers. They gave him every round. And I, I didn't see a round he lost. <laughs> but and, and somebody gave a split decision a on it. A split decision. I mean, it made no and sense. It, it, and, and that man, let me tell you, Bernard Hopkins, when he talks, he does not sound like he is a nuclear physicist or a literature teacher. But when he talks about boxing, he's a tactician. I mean, he knows why the punch is stronger this way, how to roll the shoulder, how to stand, where to put. He understands boxing maybe better than any of the boxers out there. And it shows him he's almost 50 years old. Now, don't forget, we uh, have in June, mm -hmm. uh, we have in our second uh, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame and event reunion. and reunion. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, going to be in the Sunset Event Center. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert uh, Deranger. Uh, Robert Deranger, and of course, owned uh, by the Deval uh, uh, Jerry DeValco family. Uh, not DeValco. De uh, not, not DiMaggio. DiMaggio. We got okay. it. Okay. DiMaggio's Depot, we Lumber got Yard. It. That's correct. Yeah, we're going to give him a plug for that mistake. Now, we're going to see you folks on the other side of one minute.